I'm Brian Jensen. I'm with, I'm with UW Extensions. Okay. I'm Brian Jensen. I'm with UW Extension's Integrated Pest Management Program, and I would like to take a couple minutes to talk to you about mid-season corn insect pests. If you have any questions on insecticide recommenda recommendations, I would suggest you go to the Pest Management Wisconsin uh, Field Crops Bulletin. It's updated annually. Its number is 83646. Available in PDF format at the Learning Store. You can see the URL at the bottom of the screen. Once you get to to the Learning Store, just uh, search for A3646, and it should be your top choice. By mid-season corn insect pests, I'm talking about armyworms, corn leaf aphids, and we'll finish up with European corn borers. First, true armyworms. They do not overwinter in Wisconsin, but they migrate up to Wisconsin, much like black cutworms do, uh, with our, uh, our southerly storm fronts. The females will lay eggs almost exclusively on grasses, although there are some ex exceptions. Uh, alfalfa would be one of those uh, um, exceptions. They are a leaf defoliator in that they are feeding from the leaf margin in, Sometimes you, you will see holes in the leaf, but they tend to be more ragged holes as compared to uh, a more rounded hole. Our armyworm season, you know, the, the time of the year we can expect to see armyworms uh, causing problems in corn, depends on their migration time. It can be anywhere from late May to early June for the overwintering or the migrating generation. And the summer generation may start as early as late June and can go through pretty much the, the month of July. And in some years, we can even see damage in early August. Adult armyworms are a moth, kind of a nondescript tan moth. Uh, there's not a real big need to be able to identify them. But we do need to identify the larvae. They're approximately an inch long. The coloration is greenish, sometimes brown, and color is not always a good way to identify insects. There is always a, uh, a little bit of variability within each population. The head is tan, and on armyworm larvae you'll see some alternating light and dark striping, and the belly is usually very light colored, kind of a pale yellow. <clears throat> In this slide we can see a couple of the variations. On the slide to the left is a kind of a, a darker variation. You can pick out the light uh, colored underside. Uh, and in the right you can see the, especially, it's a bit more of a greenish color, but you can see the alternating light to dark stripes. But do remember that the head is always kind of a tan color. The damage is typically feeding from the leaf margin in, kind of a ragged appearance. Uh, this leaf does show a hole chewed in the leaf, and that sometimes is possible with armyworms, but it tends to be more of a ragged hole. The armyworm threshold. All armyworms, if we're thinking about spraying, must be less than three quarters of an inch long, and that's important because we have to look at our preventable yield loss. When armyworms get longer than three quarters of an inch long, they will not be feeding for that much longer. So there is not a lot of preventable yield loss that we, we can uh, prevent with an application. So number one, the first part of the economic threshold is armyworms should be less than three quarters of an inch long before we consider spraying. The other, uh, the other part of that threshold is you would need on average one armyworm on 25% of the plants or another way to look at it is two armyworms on 25% of the plants. Moving on to corn leaf aphid, it is an occasional pest, but I'm going to talk about it because it's always present in our cornfields and people do have questions about them. Corn leaf aphids are small, they're about an eighth of an inch long, they're soft bodied, and they're kind of a bluish green in color. They have piercing sucking mouth parts, that is, much like mosquito, they extract plant sap. 
To scout for them, I would suggest you kind of spot check for them two to three weeks prior to tasseling. And to do that, just kind of as uh, uh, you know, late June to first part of uh, July, I would go along to the plant and kind of feel up and down the plant, and you can tell where that tassel is. Once you can feel that tassel at that point being unwrapped, pull that tassel out of the whirl and unfurl the leaves looking for corn leaf aphids. That's kind of an early spot check. If aphids are, are going to be a problem, you expect to see some higher level activity at that uh, two, three weeks before full tassel. The economic threshold for corn leaf aphids, and again, they're an, an occasional uh, pest at best, is 50 aphids on 50% of the plants. Here's a shot of the corn leaf aphids on the tassel. Notice they're uh, in real life about an eighth of an inch long, uh, kind of a bluish green color with the, the head region being a little bit darker color as well as the eggs. And you can also pick up uh, on this slide some cast skins. Um, insects, in order to grow larger, they have to uh, shed their, their exoskeleton, their outer, their outer skin and that we call the, the cast skins. They're not dead aphids, just a sign that the aphid population is growing. Would like to finish up with the European corn borer. It was considered formerly a key pest, meaning there was an important insect pest that we had on both field and sweet corn. Still potentially a bit of a problem sometimes on sweet corn, but by and large, the BT hybrids that we've been using uh, the past uh, 10 plus years have significantly reduced populations to the point where uh, they're not near as common as they used to be. Corn borers will have one to two generations per year depending on, uh, in part on the area of the state that you live. In the northern part of the state there are not enough heat units for them to uh, have a second generation and in that case, uh, they're pretty much tied to single generation. But in the southern half to maybe two-thirds of the state, there are two distinct generations. They only overwinter as fifth instar larvae, and that's in, usually inside the, the corn stalk. And, and there are several, several other hosts that they can feed on as well. To identify them, the adults are a moth. They're kind of a small... Uh, brownish nondescript moth. Unless we're operating a blacklight trap or a pheromone trap, uh, we're really not that concerned with what the adults look like. The larvae, on the other hand, will almost always have a jet black head. Uh, some larvae, when they advance to the fifth instar, that head may get to be more of a, a brownish color. They will have a cream colored body, especially uh, in the first three to four instars, and they can be maybe up to an inch and a quarter long, but certainly an inch long. To scout for first generation European corn borer, I would suggest that you start spot checking at about 450 to 700 degree days and look at the earliest planted corn first. Uh, that earliest planted corn is going to be most attractive to the adults for egg laying would ask that you look for shot holes in the emerging leaves. That's signs and symptoms of the early insar larvae feeding within the whirl. And would ask that you inspect 10 sets of 20 consecutive plants per field. Keep track of the uh, number of damaged plants that you find. And also in uh, two plants in each set, pull out the whirl leaves, two damaged plants, Pull out the whirl leaves and count the number of larvae per plant. That's important. Uh, as we see later in the economic threshold, uh, knowing the number of larvae you have on average per plant is important because each larvae will uh, cause about 5% yield loss. Would ask that you scout the refuge, certainly, as well as the BT hybrids. Scout the refuge because at 20%, of, uh, of your field is important to, to manage and to uh, would suggest that you scout the BT hybrids as well because we do want to keep track of any resistance issues that might be happening. 
If you have uh, less than 4% damage plants in your BT hybrids, should not be a concern, but once you get over that 4% threshold, if you will, then that might be a concern for resistance uh, developing. Here's a slide that you can see both the, the female on the left and uh, the male on the right. The male tends to be a little bit smaller, has uh, more darker brown marking than the females, and it's important to recognize those only if you're uh, monitoring pheromone traps or black light traps. The larvae will always have that jet black head uh, and a cream colored body. When scouting for first generation, here's a picture of the, the shot holing I was talking about earlier. We can see several, several different uh, irregular shaped holes throughout the plant. That's from the larvae feeding on the leaves when they're still within the whirl. And here's the, an adult, or a, a larger fifth end star larvae. This one you can see a, a little bit uh, darker body to it and the head uh, and this individual is a bit more brownish in color. European corn borers can feed within the uh, stalk like we saw in the previous shot or they can uh, also feed on the ear shank and that weakens the shank and the ear can drop to the ground. The economic threshold for first generation corn borer is shown here and, and I show this as an example of what economic thresholds uh, mean and, and how they're developed. At first, if we look at line number one, this information is from our scouting. We've determined from monitoring that field that 67% of the plants are infested. And by pulling the world leaves apart and looking for larvae, we found an average of two corn borers per infested plant. That turns out to be a field average of 1.34 larvae uh, per plant. So we come down the second line, 1.34 uh, average corn borers per plant, multiply that times our 5% yield loss. And in this situation for this field, that's going to be about a 6.7% yield loss. Coming down to line number three, that 6.7% yield loss, multiply by our, our yield of 120 bushel uh, would be about uh, a loss of $8, um, uh, excuse me, eight bushels per acre loss. We take that eight bushel times our expected selling price of $3.60 per bushel. And our fuel loss in this case would then be uh, roughly uh, pretty close to $29 per acre. If we were to spray, we would not be able to kill 100% of the corn borers. So typically we would input 80% uh, control. So uh, that $28.94 uh, yield loss times 80% is our, our uh, preventable yield loss of $23.16. Then we compare that uh, with our cost of control and decide uh, whether or not it's going to be it's going to pay to spray. In this case, I inputted $15 for control costs, and then our final figure is uh, it would pay. Uh, for us to spray it, that we would have a, uh, an advantage of $8.16 uh, per acre if we sprayed in that situation. So I think the value of going through this worksheet, if you will, is that it kind of shows you what we need to look at for uh, economic thresholds and, and uh, how to determine them. With that, I'm going to end with the mid-season corn insect pass also available on videos is early season below ground insect pests, another one on the early season above ground corn insect pests, and also one on late season corn insect pests. With that I'll conclude with the uh, mid-season corn insect pests and again if you want any information, current information on insecticides, please consult our A3646 publication, uh, Field Crop Pest Management in Wisconsin. Thank you.